And in this example, I want to show us how do we find the center of gravity, the so-called centroid, if the region R is actually determined as the region between two curves. We've seen some examples of finding the center under a curve. What if you have two, if you're between two curves? Well, if we mimic the technique that we did before, right, we have two functions this time. We have some f maybe, uh, we have some function g, like so, and then we have our x-axis for which we're gonna subdivide that into teeny tiny little pieces, right? Well, in that situation, you're going to get these rectangles that look something like the following. Again, using the, using the center of mass here, the centroids to do these things. You'll get something like this for which uh, the center, the center of these guys is gonna correspond to xi bar. And then you're gonna have for the, for the height of this thing, you're going to get one half times f of xi bar subtract g of xi bar. So that's how, that's how things are gonna change for the centers. The area question, for the area, uh, well the area is just gonna be length times width, in which case you get f of xi bar minus g of xi bar, and then you'll multiply that by delta x. And so there are some changes to the area we use for the map, which, which the area represents the mass of the rectangle. And then we did change up the y coordinate, the y bar for individual rectangles. And so when you take the limit of these things, there are a few changes. So you'll notice that for x bar, um, we get one over the area, the integral of x times f of x minus g of x. And this is a consequence of taking, you take the location of x, and this right here was the area, which changed. All right. For y bar, things look a little bit different. You get one over a, you're gonna get one half f of x squared minus g of x squared. Where did that thing come from? Well, the idea is f of x squared minus g of x squared factors as f of x minus g of x times f of x plus g of x, uh, like so. And so where do those things come from? Well, you're gonna get that the area is this part right here. And actually, I, I miswrote it, I, I, I wrote incorrectly earlier, but the midpoint with the y-axis should be one half f of x plus g of x, because you're just calculating the midpoint of f of x i bar on top and the midpoint of f uh, of g of x i bar on the bottom. Sorry about that. So you get an f plus g from the centroid there. You get an, you get an f minus g. How did that become a plus right there? Whoops-a-daisy. That should be a minus and the other one should be a plus. So you get a minus here, you get a plus right here, and so when you multiply those together, you get this difference of squares. Uh, and so with all that, we have, uh, we have some di more diverse versions of these centroid formulas. If you're looking for the area, or the centroid between two curves. Now, before we put these actually into practice, I do wanna point out a, an interesting remark here. Um, if, you take, if you take this formula right here for if you take this formula for x bar, um, if you times both sides by two pi a, you're gonna get that two pi a x bar equals two pi, the integral from a to b, of x times f of x minus g of x dx. And if this formula over here looks familiar at all, that's because this formula is none other than the shell method that we had learned about previously. And so you'll notice here that if you take together two pi x bar, which is the circumference of this is the circumference of the circle formed by rotating the centroid around an axis, and then if you times this by the area of the region, that the distance traveled by the centroid times by the area is equal to the volume of the solid revolution. This is none other than the theorem of Pappus that we had talked about before. And this is actually a subtle proof of that. It really just comes from the fact that the formula for the shell method is so similar to the formula for the centroid that the two things actually can measure the same thing basically. Okay, that gives you the shell method. Well, what if we do the same thing for y bar right here? Um, if you take two pi y bar a, this is gonna look like two pi times the integral from a to b, one half f of x squared minus g of x squared dx. Uh, you'll notice that the one, can the one half cancels with the two. 
And so now we get something that looks like the washer method. And so I point this out for two reasons. One, this actually gives us a justification of the theorem of Pappas we had seen previously, but it also gives you a mnemonic device to try to remember the centroid formulas for, for X and Y. Because if we know the shell method and washer method, and if you've been following this series, you've, you've done that already, we hopefully know those methods, and therefore these are not new formulas. They're just slight tweaks of formulas we've already done. And so there's kind of sort of two reasons to support that connection. Whoops. Uh, don't want any of this on the screen. It, okay, it's gone. Now let's get to it. Let's get to a specific example. Let's find the centroid of the region bounded by the line y equals x and the parabola y equals x squared. So we see the parabola in green uh, in the illustration below and the line y equals x is illustrated in yellow right there. Let's find the centroid of this thing. So to begin with, we want to find the area. We have to always do that. The area between the curves we're going to go from 0 to well, where do these points intersect? They intersect when x squared equals x. That is, x squared minus x equals 0. x times x minus 1. You're going to get x equals 0 and 1 as our points of intersection. So we're going to integrate from 0 to 1. We take the bigger function, which is x, minus the smaller function, which is x squared. Uh, this integral is not so bad. We get x squared over 2 minus x cubed over 3 from 0 to 1. Uh, we get one half minus one third, which is one sixth. That's going to be the area of this region. And therefore, notice one over a is going to equal six. We're going to use that in our calculation. Now, next, to do x bar, we have to do one over a, the integral from zero to one, x times what did our formula say? It said f of x minus g of x. So again, take the bigger function, x minus x squared dx. This is very similar to what we just did, um, although we do need to distribute things here. So we're going to get 6 times the integral from 0 to 1 of x squared minus x cubed. And so integrating that thing, we end up with 6 times. We're going to get x cubed over 3 minus x to the fourth over 4 as we go from 0 to 1. Plug it in 0, make everything disappear. Plug it in uh, one, we're going to get six times a third minus a fourth. If you distribute the six through, you end up with two minus three halves. So we're going to write this as four halves. And so we get a one half when we're done. So that's going to be the x coordinate of the center, which we can see in the diagram like so. Now for y bar, y bar, remember, is going to equal one over a times the integral from a to b of well, I'm just going to plug in the specific, no, we'll plug in the specific values there. 1 over a was a 6. We're going to go from 0 to 1. We get 1 half. Now we get a difference of squares, just like the washer method. So we're going to get x squared, which we're squaring x, which is the upper function, minus x to the fourth, which is x squared squared dx. So notice this is a difference of squares right here. Um, 1 half times that by 6, that's going to give us a 3. Antiderivatives, the antiderivative of x squared is x cubed over 3. Antiderivative of x to the 4th will be x to the 5th over 5. Plug it in 0 and 1. Again, when you plug in 0, everything will vanish. When you plug in 1, uh, whoops, sorry about that. When you plug in 1, you get 1 third minus 1 fifth. I'm going to distribute the 3, so we get 1 minus 3 fifths, which of course is 5 over 5 minus 3 fifths, and we end up with a 2 fifths. Uh, which agrees with the uh, calculation we had up right here. And so we can actually adapt the centroid formula, not just for uh, a region bounded below a curve, but the region between two curves. And we've also seen that this mimics the shell method and washer methods we've seen before, thus justifying the theorem of Pappas that we had, we had seen before. And so that's going to bring us to the end of lecture 23. Um, we've seen how centroids can be useful, like with the theorem of Pappas and other things related to that. In the next lecture, we're going to talk about what integration has to do with probability. And this idea of centroid will also come up again because the centroid of a random variable is going to be the expected value, a.k.a. the average value. So take a look for that video. Um, in the meanwhile, if you have any questions while you're watching these videos, feel free to post your comments below. I'll be happy to answer them. And I hope to see you next time, everyone. Bye.